Hello everyone and welcome back. As promised, in this session we are going to learn about error detection. So, without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the outcome of today's session, today we will acquire the understanding of the need of distance in error detection first. Thereafter, we will observe two solved examples. Now, whenever we transmit data, be that from one machine to another one, or be that from a memory storage to the CPU or vice versa, due to any reason, during the transmission, if the data that we are sending gets altered, we call that error. Now, there are two mechanisms to handle errors. First, error detection, and the second one is error correction. Now, coming to error detection, here we actually have the certainty of error. That is, we are quite certain that the error has occurred. However, we are unaware of the erroneous bit. On the contrary, in case of error correction, we not only have the certainty of error, additionally, we are also aware of the erroneous bit. And since we are aware of the erroneous bit, we actually go ahead and do the correction. Now, in today's discussion, we will mainly focus on error detection. Now, before going straight to the context, let's understand the prerequisite of the codes which we will use for error detection or correction. Say we are using BCD or 8421 codes for transmission. Now, to be really honest, for error detection or correction, we can't really use 8421 or BCD, and the reason behind that will be revealed to us in our upcoming sessions. However, for this particular instance, we are using BCD codes for transmission. Now, say we have two different machines. Now, this one is the sender, and this one is the receiver. Say the sender is selecting this particular pattern, that is 0011, that is a valid BCD for transmission. Now, when it transmits the data, due to some reason, the receiver received the data as 0001. So, basically, the third bit got toggled, right? However, in this situation, the receiver can't detect the error because this is also a valid BCD code. So, basically, during transmission, if our data gets changed to another valid data, then the machines cannot detect the errors. Now, let's consider another situation. Say this time, the sender wants to send the data 1001, which is again a valid pattern in BCD. Now, during transmission, say the data which the receiver receives is 1011. Here also, the third bit got toggled. However, if you observe this particular pattern closely, this sees an invalid BCD pattern. Now, since it is an invalid BCD pattern, now the receiver is likely to detect that this particular data includes an erroneous bit. So, basically, the code which is being used for data transmission, it should be chosen in such a way that both the sender and the receiver must recognize all the valid and invalid patterns. Now, let's observe the significance of distance in error detection. So, basically, we will learn now how should we choose the code for data transmission. Now, say we have established one communication setup. And we are quite certain that the segment of data which is being transmitted at once, at max can contain one erroneous bit. So, therefore, in order to detect one bit error, the code should be chosen in such a way that the distance between two valid codes must be two, at least. Now, let me illustrate this. Say this is a valid code which we have chosen and selected as valid. Now, since we are looking for one bit error, therefore, the code which is unit distant from this valid code will be considered as invalid. Similarly, the next valid code will also be unit distant from this invalid code. Because if you remember, we assumed that our system is set in such a way that the valid code which is being transmitted can at max have one erroneous bit. So, even if our valid code gets corrupted, it will be turned into a code which is unit distant from our valid code. Similarly, after this valid code, the patterns which are unit distant from this will be selected as invalid. Thereafter, a code which is unit distant from this particular invalid code can be selected as the next valid code. So, basically, during the detection of one bit error, the distance between two valid code is going to be two. Right? Let me illustrate this with a proper example. Say we have chosen this particular code as a valid code, that is all zeros. Then we can also state that this code, which is 0011, is the next valid code. However, the pattern 0001 will be selected as an invalid code. Now, why is so? Because if you observe, 
the distance between this code and this code is actually 2 because this code can be turned into this one if we toggle these two bits, right? However, in order to convert this particular code into this one, all we have to do is toggle the LSB. Similarly, in order to convert this code to this one, we have to toggle this bit. So basically, this is unit distant from this one and this one both, but the distance between these two is 2. So therefore, these two can be selected as valid codes for 1-bit error detection. Remember, for 1-bit error detection, the distance between two valid codes must at least be 2. Let's now solve some example problems. Consider this question. Determine whether a code having the following patterns can detect 1-bit error. Now, for 1-bit error detection, we just observe that the valid codes should at least be of distance 2, right? So, let's judge these codes. Now, if you observe, these two codes are unit distant. Now, why so? This particular code can be converted into this one if we just toggle the LSB, right? Similarly, this code is also unit distant to this one because this one can be converted into this if we toggle the MSB, isn't it? Now, we just have seen, in order to detect 1-bit error, all the codes that we are using should be of distance 2, right? So, using these patterns, we can't really detect 1-bit errors. Let's now move on to the next question. Determine whether a code having the following patterns can detect 1-bit error. Now, a new set of patterns are given to us. Let's judge them as well. Observe, this and this pattern are of distance 2. Now, why so? This one can be converted into this one if we toggle the least significant 2 bits, right? Similarly, this one can be converted into this one if we toggle these 2 bits, correct? Also, in order to convert this code into this one, we will have to toggle both the MSB and the LSB. So, this particular code has the distance 2 with all the remaining codes. Now, let's check out this one. Observe, this code can be converted into this one if we toggle the LSB and the MSB, correct? Then again, this particular code can be converted into this one if we toggle the MSB and the bit next to LSB. So, this code also had distance 2 with all the remaining codes. Let's judge these two now. Observe, in order to convert this into this one, we will have to toggle the least significant two bits, right? So, this one also has the distance 2 with all the remaining codes. And the same we can state for this one. Now, not only this, if we judge all the codes which are unit distant to these, we will find those are not enlisted in this particular list. So, let's do that. If we consider four zeros, the unit distant codes for this one would be 0001, then 0010, thereafter 0100 and 1000. All these codes are unit distant from this one. And observe, none of these are included in this particular list. Similarly, if we consider 0011, the codes which are unit distant to this one are 0001, 0010, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and 1011. Observe, none of these are included in this particular list. And the same can be stated for 1010. If we consider all the unit distant codes for this one, those will be these. Finally, if we consider 1001, the codes which are unit distant to this one are these. And notice, none of these are included in this particular list. So yes, these patterns can help us detect 1-bit error. So what did we learn? The patterns which we are enlisting as valid codes shouldn't include any of the codes which are unit distant to these. Let's now observe the valid patterns if we are trying to detect 2-bit errors. Now, say we have two valid pattern and this time we are going to select the valid patterns in such a way that we can detect 2-bit errors. Therefore, from this valid pattern, all the invalid patterns will be of distance 1 and the same can be stated for this valid pattern as well. All the invalid patterns will be of distance 1 for this too. Also, since we are trying to detect 2-bit errors, the distance between these two invalid patterns will also be 1. So basically, what we are trying to convey in here, during transmission, if two bits of this particular valid pattern gets changed, it will at max end up being in this place, but never here. 
and the same can be stated for this valid pattern as well. During transmission, if two bits from this particular valid patterns are changed, the invalid pattern will be this, but never this valid pattern. So here also, there is no way one valid pattern can get converted into another valid pattern just because the distance between them is 3. Therefore, we can provide a generalization like this that for t bit error detection, the distance should be greater than or equals to t plus 1. As in for 2 bit error detection, the distance was 2 plus 1, that is 3. So for t bit error detection, it should at least be t plus 1, and if the distance is even more than that, that's also fine. And this particular criteria is known as Hamming distance for error detection. So, in this session, we first tried acquiring the understanding the need of distance in error detection, and we also have seen two solved examples. Alright, people, that will be all for this session. In the next session, we will observe error correction. So, I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.